Let's start. Welcome members to the 16th meeting in the 2018 of the Standards Peace Procedure and Public Appointments Committee. I have received apologies from Elaine Smith, MSP. Everybody else is present, I think. All right, the first item on the agenda is declaration of interests. Um, we've got three new members here, so four, four new members, well, four new members, yes. Um, first of all, invite Bill Kidd to declare any relevant interests. I, I have no relevant interests to declare, but thank you. Okay. Now invite Mark Russell. Uh, no relevant interests to declare, Chair. Okay, thank you. And Maureen Watt. No relevant interests to declare. And Bill Patterson. Uh, no relevant interest in the point to the public. They can look at my register of interest for further detail. Okay, thank you. Now, item agenda number two is, is selection of a new convener. I'm only here as a temporary member to go through the process. Parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish National Party are eligible for nomination as convener of this committee. I understand that Bill Kidd is the party's nominee in this post. Is that yes. correct? Thank you. Yes. Happy to, to, you're happy to take the post? I, I would be, yes. Thank you. Do we agree that Bill Kidd should be our convener? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. And no second. Well, well done. Thank you. May you, may you go with, with our blessing on this thank difficult you. task. Thank you, sir. Okay, th thank you very much. We'll now change chairs and you can take over. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone, uh, for your, your kindness. And uh, thank you to Tom for, for opening the meeting for us and taking the initial steps. Um, further to the choice of a convener, a choice of deputy convener uh, now has to be agreed by the committee. And um, the parliament has agreed that only members of the Scottish Green Party are eligible for nomination as deputy convener of this committee. And I understand that Mark Ruskell is the party's nominee for this post. Is that correct, Mark? That is, yes. Thank you very much, sir. Um, OK, do we agree to choose Mark Ruskell as our deputy convener? Agreed. Great stuff. Uh, well, congratulations, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Looking forward to working with colleagues. Thanks very much. Thank you. OK, let's get into the nitty-gritty, I think, uh, if we can call this. Um, OK. Agenda item four is in relation to cross-party groups and recognition of such. Um, so we have evidence to take on four proposed cross-party groups. And the first group we have to consider is the proposed cross-party group on prevention and healing of adverse childhood experiences, known as ACEs. I would like to welcome Rona Mackay to the meeting. Thank you, Rona, for attending. And Rona is a member of the proposed group. So I'd invite Rona to make an opening statement in terms of why we should um, approve the cross-party group. Okay, thank you. Thank you, convener. Um, well, firstly, I'm here on behalf of Gail Ross, who is the convener, but who is off ill at the moment. And Gail would, Gail's asked me to pass on her apologies and to thank you for accepting a substitute uh, to come here today. I think the deputy convener is in committee, so that's really, really why I'm here. Um, Gail held a, a, a members debate on ACES in January of this year, and it, and it, it gained a lot of support. And um, I think we all know now the importance and the need for a group um, such as, as, as ACES. Um, the Scottish Government have um, made a large commitment in the programme for government and um, there's a, a growing awareness of um, just the, the, the challenges um, that adverse childhood experiences have on uh, people throughout their lives. Starting in childhood has a huge impact on health, well-being and the future opportunities. Um, and I think it was felt that we needed to have something in Parliament to just to um, bring to life and to have um, to have people who've experienced uh, adverse uh, have had experience of it come in an informal setting, not in a public meeting, and be able to to give us their account of it. And that was um, partly the, one of the reasons that it was. Um, it, I think that Gail wanted to constitute it. 
Well, thank you very much. Um, can I invite any questions from members um, regarding the proposed cross-party group? Uh, yeah, Jamie. Just a very quick one, uh, Rona. Um, uh, obviously, Gail Ross is the convener, and then MacArthur, MSP for Orkney, is, is on it. How, how can you make sure that um, uh, people from, say, the more remote areas like the Highlands and Islands can be included or that, that organisations that are based in there are included or involved in, in the group? Yeah, I mean, I think I mean having having Liam on, on as, as a member is really helpful um, and I know that um, he's been kind of, you know, spreading the word up there. So I think the aim is just, just to cover, you know, the whole of the whole of Scotland and, and make sure that we, we're aware that um, it's not all just happening in the central belt and it's not just Glasgow and Edinburgh, it's, it's all over. So I think, you know, through Liam and I think the, the, the Secretariat are very aware that they get a wide, as wide a, a, a participation as possible. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Jamie. Mark, please. Um, thank you, convener. I mean, it, it's obviously a hugely important uh, agenda, as you've outlined, Rona. I'm just wondering, though, um, I'm given that there are two other CPGs which, which are effectively overlapping, if there's been any consideration of joint meetings to kind of share the experiences of members of this group with members of other groups that would obviously have an interest in this area but might not want to spend their entire time uh, you know, focused on, on these particular issues. I think this, this was obviously looked into, as, as with all cross-party groups, and I mean, I think that it was thought that this was so specific in, in, its, um, in its kind of um, remit that um, it sh uh, an, an ANESIS group shouldn't be prevented if there was any common links with other groups. There was definitely a need for, for one specific um, ACES group. And uh, they will just tackle. we will be focusing on specific issues within that group that other groups may not. So I think that was the, 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 the purpose for well, it. Will there actually be joint meetings, though? Because I think we're seeing this increasingly with cross-party groups, that they're sharing agendas and, and, and I'm sharing sure they, experiences. I'm, I'm, I, the answer is I don't really know, but I'm sure it wouldn't be ruled out, you know. OK. That thing, Mark, yep. Um, thank you. And any other questions yes, at all? Yes, to Tom. To follow on from that, um, the organisations which are involved with this, your group, um, are they also on the other groups as, as well? I imagine some of them are, but I, I can't answer for sure, to be quite honest. I don't, I don't know what other groups, you know, who they've got on their, their books, so I'm not not awfully sure. Um, the Wave Trust is the secretariat for the group, and they've got quite a wide reach for all these, um, you know, this this in this subject, so, so they may well be, but I'm just not sure. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Gil. I'm just looking at the makeup of the group so far, and uh, it, the spread of people who are participating, MSPs that are across the parliament and the parties and the numbers is quite impressive it's, it's very, very much cross party and it's um and it has you know got wide, widespread support yeah thank you very much and anyone else at all okay well thank you very much uh, to the members for those uh, worthwhile questions and i'd like to thank rona mckay for her attendance um the committee will uh, consider whether to approve this application for recognition when we reach agenda item five today and uh, you will be informed and Gail Ross MSP as the proposed convener will also be informed and thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. okay, we'll wait till James gets in place. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the second group we have today uh, to consider as a proposed cross-party group is a cross-party group on combating sectarianism in Scottish society. And I would like to welcome James Dorn, an MSP, to the meeting. Uh, James uh, will be the convener of the proposed group, and I would invite James to make an opening statement about the pur purpose of the group, please. Thank you, uh, convener. Uh, as many of you will know, and you won't be able to tell by looking at me, but I'm actually a, a child of the 60s and without the hippie look and the long hair. But And during the 60s, sectarianism was pretty rife in Glasgow. It was certainly where I stayed, west of Scotland. There's been huge steps towards making that disappear. There's no doubt about it. Society works much harder together. But for me, in recent years, has been a perceived perceived by me anyway, uh, upsurging that 
mostly based around football, but there's been other incidences elsewhere in society that I think um, have to be dealt with. The most obvious one being the attack on the priest outside St Alfonso's Church, uh, just round about the same time as an orange walk was taking place. Now, I've been t we've been told that the, um, the perpetrator of this wasn't uh, a follower of the walk, wasn't a member of the, the, the walk, but they, they happened round about the same time, and I think the, there's clearly some kind of link there. So for me, there, there's something that has to be done on that. I was personally disappointed, for example. Football is a great attractor to this. Glasgow football, West of Scotland, does, is a great attractor to sectarianism. And I personally was disappointed when the Offensive Behaviour Act was uh, repealed. I think that we have to make sure that we send out a strong message that we still take it seriously. Uh, and what I'm hoping to do with this cross-party group is do that. Now, although I've mentioned football, I've also said that it's not just in football uh, and that we will not be concentrating solely in there, but we do have to recognise that it does have an, an almost unique place uh, in Scottish society when it comes to sectarianism. OK. Thank you very much um, for that, James. Um, OK. Uh, that's the opening statement. Do we have any questions from members regarding this proposal? And we don't have any. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, I'll probably just put my foot on it now by not staying quiet when I should. But just to say that we've got a <laughs> wide range of people uh, who have agreed to join us. Uh, and I've got a meeting with the SFA and SPFL on Monday. But uh, the Church of Scotland and many others have, have said that they're going to participate in this. Okay. So can, I, can I just ask one thing then, actually, because you've opened the door now. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, will there be other um, church-based organisations? Every, every, everybody's been invited. Uh, we, we've, well, I'm, I'm saying that hopefully everybody's in, been invited. We've sent out a wide range of, of invitations to uh, religious groups and we've had very positive responses from a number of them. Thank you very much. Uh, any further? Yes, Maureen, please. Um, as well as the um, football bodies, have you had any responses or have you sent out letters to specific football teams and had any uh, responses? If I remember correctly, we, we sent... I have to be careful here because I'm not quite... I can't remember all the letters that were sent out and I can't remember if we decided not to. Uh, because we did discuss sending out to obviously to uh, the Celtic Rangers, um, but I can't. I honestly can't remember if we did or not, Murray. Um Okay, right. Thank you. Anyone else have a question? Okay, right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you very much for putting forward the case for the cross-party group. Um, the committee will consider whether to approve this application for recognition when we reach our agenda item for that, and we will inform you of the decision thereafter. Okay, okay thank, thank, you thank you very, very much. much. Thanks for your time. Right, well, thank you very much. Uh, the, the third group uh, which we have to consider today is the proposed cross-party group on the Scottish Gypsy Traveller community. Uh, I'd like to welcome Mary Fee, MSP, to the meeting. Uh, Mary would be the convener of the proposed group, and I would invite Mary to make an opening statement about the purpose of the group, please. Thank you, um, convener. I mean, the, the main purpose of the group would be to provide a forum for discussion and information sharing on issues related to the the problems that are faced by the Scottish Gypsy um, Traveller community. And the group will promote the interests and raise awareness of the of the, the the issues that affect them. I mean, people around the table may know that the Gypsy Traveller community are one of the most disproportionately affected groups in Scotland that are affected by discrimination. It's an issue that I have campaigned on since I, I came into this parliament. They are a marginalised community that on a day-to-day -day basis face prejudice and, and discrimination. And, and the aim of the group is to try and um, raise the profile of, of the Gypsy Traveller community, but also find ways to tackle and eradicate the discrimination that they face. OK, well, thank you very much for that. Um, can I ask if there are any questions from members regarding this proposed group? Yes, Mark. Um, yeah, thank you. Um, gypsy Traveller communities are so badly disenfranchised and, and perhaps very remote from 
the, the activities and the considerations in this parliament. So I'm just interested to know how the CPG will engage with those communities on the ground and actually bring their real life experiences into, into the CPG. Because a lot of organizations in here, a lot of kind of representative organizations and bodies and agencies, I'm just wondering how do you get those that real experiences into these rooms. Yes. I, I mean, th there are a lot of organisations that work directly with the gypsy travelling um, c community, but perhaps it might be a bit, it would be helpful to give you a bit of background. In the last session of Parliament, I was convener of the Equalities Committee when we carried out um, two inquiries into, into the gypsy traveller community and the issues that they face. Um, and, and I made a lot of contacts within the gypsy travelling community, and they are very distanced from public life. They are very reluctant to come forward, and it took a long time to build up um, relationships when I was convener of the Equalities Committee with that community and we were fairly successful. Um, after the last two reports were done in the last session of Parliament, there was a slight dip in engagement between, if you like, public life and, and the gypsy traveller um, community. And, and I have spent a considerable amount of time rebuilding that trust and rebuilding that relationship. And, and this is why I am now proposing that this cross-party group be set up because I am now in a position to, to re-engage. The community are quite happy to come forward and engage with politicians and come back into this building and, and talk about their experiences and talk about the discrimination that they face. So there are a number of reasons that the cross-party group has been set up now, and it, and it is about that rebuilding of trust in the community are ready to engage again. Mm -hmm. that. Okay. No, okay. Anyone else at all? Uh, well, perhaps I could mention something myself, if you don't mind, Mary. Um, I, about 10 years ago, was on the precursor to the Equalities Committee, and uh, we did do some work on the gypsy traveller community in Scotland uh, back then, um, and there was a report done, as you say, there's been some more work done since then within the Parliament. Do, do you think that there's been any movement forward in terms of integration and a better relationship um, with the gypsy traveller community and the general community? <sighs> Not, not as much as I would like to have seen. I mean, th th there has been um, a small decline in um, some of the attitudes and discrimination that they face. There are there are pockets of good practice across the country, and in, in the North East, there is a very good relationship um, within some schools and, and, and the local gypsy um, travelling community. But if you look at the most recent social um, attitude study, thirty four percent of people still believe a gypsy traveller would be unsuitable to be a teacher. And 31% of the population would be unhappy if a member of their family were to marry a gypsy traveller. So while some progress has been made, there is still a huge amount of work that needs to be done. Um, and the time is right for this cross-party group to, if you like, take up the mantle and, and try and tackle some of that discrimination. OK, well, I'd like to thank you, uh, Mary, for putting forward your case there for the cross-party group. And uh, I know that you'll be staying on for consideration of the next group. Um, we only have four, so you're not good to be much longer. Um, but thank you very much for that one. That's, no, you're that's welcome. welcome. Thank you. Um, so the final group we do have to consider um, is the proposed cross-party group on women's justice. And Mary Fee uh, is still with us. She is joining us to consider uh, for consideration of this group. And Mary would be the deputy convener of the proposed group, uh, cross-party group on women's justice. And can I ask you if you would like to make an opening statement on the purpose of this group, please? Thank you, convener. Um, the the cross-party group on women's justice would focus on every aspect of women's experience within the, the, the justice system. And women in the justice system is something that's very much in the public interest. As too many women are being incarcerated on short sentences um, or on remand, and it is very much to the detriment of family life. There is very little support for women um, to be rehabilitated rather than send them to, um, to, to prison. More often than not, women have a very negative experience of, of the, the court process and the justice system. Um, and women are more likely to lose all contact with their family, um, including their children, if, if they are um, incarcerated for any length of time. OK, well, thank you very much for that. Um, so, any questions at all from any members, please? Uh, oh, sorry, yes, Jamie. No, I'm, just, I'm just going to 
raised a point that I, I nearly always make, which is um, obviously there are specific issues for the Highlands and Islands, particularly people from the Highlands and Islands that may be incarcerated. I know you've got two representatives, I think, at least here. But are there any specific organisations that you think could be um, involved in this? Or I suppose how do you how do you make sure that the specific perhaps needs of the Highlands and Islands are included on those from more remote areas? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, we, we have Rhoda Grant and, and Liam MacArthur who are um, signed up. We have um, a list of initial organisations that, that are happy to work with, with the CPG. I have worked very closely with um, Families Outside and the Prison Reform Trust, and they have very very good links across the country to other organisations. And obviously, once the group is established, um, Rhoda Grant and Liam MacArthur may be able to give us more information about local groups because we are very keen to, to reach out because I am very aware that women's experience of the justice system varies greatly between the Central Belt and the Highlands and Islands. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Jimmy. Um, yes, Tom. Yeah, just uh, um, obviously the um, situation in Scotland is not unique to Scotland. There are issues around the United Kingdom in general, in fact, in Europe as well. Um, what, where are, you, are you able to bring into the effect of those as well, or the influence of those, or the learning from other places? The cross-party group would be more than happy to look at um, good practice from um, elsewhere in the UK and from elsewhere um, in, in, in Europe. I know by, from previous work that I've done, there are different models of um, of rehabilitation. There are, are different models within the, the, the penal system across Europe, and, and there is some very good practice, and we'd be more than happy to, to look at that. I mean, if, if you look at the, the very recent past, the, the, the Commission on Women women Offenders that Dame Eilish Angelini um, completed, I mean, there, there are a number of recommendations in there, and she pulls on evidence from other parts of the UK and of Europe, and that's something that we will be looking very closely at. Any follow-up? Uh, Maureen, please. Um, hi, Mary. Has there been any uh, interest expressed by those people who work in prisons in relation to families, actual people un employed by the SPS? The contact officers. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I mean, the committee may know, I, I also convene the cross-party group in families affected by imprisonment. And that cross-party group looks specifically at issues that affect families, um, whether that's contact time with offenders, the, the time it takes to travel to and from prison, um, issues within the school um, because of the impact of offending on, on children. That cross-party group works very closely with the Scottish Prison Service and the family contact officers. So I, I have an existing relationship with family contact officers, and that is somewhat something that I would be keen to um, explore further um, once this cross-party group is established. Thank you very much. Any further questions at all? OK, thank you. Right, well, I'd like to thank Mary Fee, MSP, for her attendance here today. Um, and uh, just to let you know, the committee will consider uh, whether to approve this application for recognition when we come to agenda item five here, and you will be informed officially of the decision thereafter. Thank you very much, Mary. Thank you, convener. Thank you, committee. OK. Right, uh, we're not going into private session anyway, so we can just carry straight on if, uh, if that's all right, people. Agenda item five, which is cross-party group approval. So what I propose to do is um, mention each of the four uh, cross-party group, proposed cross-party groups which we've we've had here today. And um, if anyone has uh, any doubts or whatever, they can raise them at that point, or if they've got any comments to make. Um, so the first uh, of the four was the prevention and healing of adverse childhood experiences, or ACEs. Um, anyone have any comments to make about presentation or anything. Okay, shall we say then that that will be approved by the committee? Thank you. Thank you. Um, the second was a cross-party group proposed on combating sectarianism in Scottish society. Uh, any comments from anyone regarding that? No comments. Uh, shall we say that that is approved then as a cross-party group? Agreed. Thank you. And then we had the third um, uh, CPG proposed, and that was the Scottish Gypsy Traveller Community. And do we have any comments to raise there? No comments. Would that be agreed then? Agreed. 
thank you very much. And finally, uh, CPG on women's justice and would there be any comments regarding this? No comments, okay. And would we agree that the CPG on women's justice should be recognised? Thank you all very much indeed. Um, okay, so that's us uh, finished with the cross-party groups uh, discussion at the moment. I'm sure that <laughs> we'll have more in the future. Um, agenda item six, still in public. Agenda item six regards the Commissioner for Ethical Standards and Public Life in Scotland. And um, we are here to consider a revision to the direction to the Commissioner for Ethical Standards in Public Life Scotland, that's the Commissioner, um, at the meeting on the 28th of June of this committee, uh, there was a review of the directions to the Commissioner and it was agreed on the 28th of June to reduce the period of time that the Commissioner is required to retain documents and records considered in the course of his investigations. Now, that proposal um, by this committee in the revised direction is to reduce the period of time for retention of these documents from five years to 12 months. That's one year, obviously. Um, so, anyone have any comments to raise or issues at all? No. None. Okay, so can we um, state that we believe that this should be our direction, the revised direction should be that the retention of these documents and records by the Commissioner is to be reduced from five years to a period of 12 months. Okay. Well, I'd like to thank everyone for that because that was painless. And <laughs> I'd like to close the meeting and thank you all for your attendance. I'll see you at the next meeting.